Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's really a big pleasure to see so many people after so long. Uh, so it's a pleasure also to introduce our speaker, Daniel Madulu Shadra. He's our visitor from Tanzania. He will be around two months. So if you find uh, his research interesting, please don't hesitate to talk with him. He has a very nice story, so especially interesting for, for the students because he was a step student. So he did all his career. He has done all his career in um, Tanzania, but he came to STP first time as a step student, uh, and uh, he joined here for several months. But he was so interested in physics that he did the PhD course of PISA and the and the courses uh, also here in the diploma. The diploma yes. So he was extremely motivated to this, <laughs> and he took a lot of profit from the courses because now yes. he's a professor in Tanzania and he's teaching a lot of new students in this country, your country, and uh, we hope that uh, you get some motivation for him. So he will talk about natural products and new discoveries. Yeah, thanks, uh, for the nice introduction. Uh, uh, my talk will be on uh, computational methods uh, that we use in the discovery of active or natural products. As I mentioned, from Tanzania and I'm at St. John's University in Tanzania. And now I'm visiting uh, ICTP for some months. So back home to Tanzania, about my place. Uh, uh, St. John's University of Tanzania is uh, in uh, Dodoma, the capital of this city. And, uh, from the Doma to St. John's to Trieste is far as this, as you can. <laughs> and uh, St. John's, so I work in the department of, of chemistry. So myself, I'm a trained chemist, after as an experimental chemist. And then I moved from being an experimentalist to the rest of computer scientist. So I moved from doing chemistry to computational biophysics. me from uh, being a experimentalist to compression. And then uh, I located this step and uh, also the support from the office of the former RP director, Professor Roberto Fernando. It was a very nice experience actually for me. So back home to Tanda, then I said, oh, okay, this is I uh, have learned here, yeah, I should go bring food back. So I established the training um, by physics schools each year. So since 2018 today, now we have been a mission to establish an African center of biophysics. So we hope it will work uh, very, very soon. And uh, uh, the school has been uh, very successful bringing many uh, African scientists. So all these uh, participants coming from different countries in Africa. And the good thing is, some are doing a PhD, for example, this lady she's here in Italy and in Iran. She met her supervisor in uh, the school. So, this is uh, a success of it. Now, let's go back to our business. And uh, I'll be sharing with you the overview of natural product research in Tanzania and how we can use computational methods to understand the biological activity and the actual how they work. So uh, research is a natural product in Tanzania uh, dated back to the early the 1970s, uh, where uh, Professor Hassan al then was a uh, professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Dar es Salaam. So actually, Hassan al is a part of Hassan al. So we have Hassan al Jr., Hassan al Senior. And then uh, with Professor Ancunia, sorry, we lost two, three months ago. So the giant that established the natural product research and the motivation was the isolation of this nice small electric. And he did not know how to name it. So he named Barco, Barco, in Swahili, Baraka. They said, because it has two uh, hydroxy group on the alcohol letters, so let's call it Barco. But it's a blessing. So they said, oh, we have a blessing to this research. So natural products actually are uh, of different classes. And how do we obtain from the plant? As the plant is dry, you know, with uh, biotic and, you know, with all the stresses, then they make, of course, food for them to survive. As they make food 
solutions from different sources, from the inorganic, from monoxide, like from water. There are different pathways that they go through. So the first pathway will lead to fatty metabolites, that's the vitamin E, etc., etc., that are very essential for the for life. And again, as they strive this pathway, one of biosynthetic, they give another product, the second, we call them a, a secondary metabolite. So they are not, so we have primary metabolite, we have secondary metabolite. So the secondary metabolite are of actually no use to the plant. So actually they give them out as, you know, for or, you know, for as, as the byproduct of the biosynthesis. And then for us, we use them. They are very important for us. So, and then we can find them from many plants and uh, of different classes like alkaloid, papenol, flavonoid, and many for the pet type. And actually, uh, this, uh, uh, of course, we use them in our daily life and because others are from different sources. We can obtain them from marine organisms and from our natural. Every day we use it. Uh, we call it in Swahili in Darasin. And then we use this natural product for many, many years. They have been used in the, as sources of medicine. And uh, I will focus also my discussion with these two natural products. And they are shown very good promise in, uh, uh, as a neuroprotective agent in the treatment of Warzini and Parkinson's disease and also in many other uh, diseases. So some natural products now have been approved by FDA for treatment of many uh, diseases. For example, as an analgesic, for cardioversicular, antiviral, and many. And uh, they're from marine organisms and the other from uh, the plants. Now in Tanzania, natural product research, so we have very uh, two media, uh, two three groups. One group is focused on the isolation and the characterization of this natural product. And this man, uh, Professor Nyandoro from University of Dalekala, so he was also my uh, MSc scientist advisor, and now we work together with him. And uh, this uh, Professor Esther, she's a student of Professor Sana, senior. She was trained in natural product and now she do formulation of this natural uh, product. So how do we obtain this natural product in the laboratory? Normally, the uh, uh, chemist will go to the field, will collect the plant, will uh, 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 do solvation, put in a solvent, evaporate the solvent, get the crude extract, do fractionation, and we use spectroscopic technique. We get some signals, then we use in these signals, like in any matter, then you can say, oh, this signal corresponds to carbon, it corresponds to this, the atom. And then we join together, we get the molecule. <laughs> and also with the other, like uh, animals. So example of this natural product, very interesting, is, for example, this alkaloid. So most interesting look is the change just in this group here. So chemists are always interested with uh, a small change to the functional group. So the changes in the opening of this to form this result to a dramatic effect in the parent activity. So interested in how this is happening. So computational approach is where now come in to help understand how this is really working and what is happening. So I will give an example to this one uh, in uh, the next few slides. Yes. Can you go back to this one? Yes. You said there's a difference there. What is the difference in the function? Ah, okay. Uh, this is a, a okay. This uh, molecular, uh, the alkaloid, eh? as the labistide. So they show the ability to kill the lab. At what the concentration is effective. So this is a, the little dose of killing the population of the tested organism. 
So this one is able to kill at 0 0.0025 milligram per milliliter. So this is milligram per milliliter. So the more rest, 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 the more effective, effective, effective. It is a very small quantity to give a larger effect. That's what it means. So the other type of natural product that I will use also in my talk is this uh, uh, from uh, the plant. Because when I was doing the masters there, we tried to beat many of them, and we tested them as a and cancer, uh, biotic, and then now we are working with them as a neuroprotective agent from two perspectives. So using the computational approach and using the experimental assay. Now, why traditionally the process of discovering a drug is very possible, very challenging. You know, it, takes, it takes a longer time. 15 years on average. If you go to the pharmaceutical, you ask for a panadol, be in mind it has taken more than 15 years to be approved. And it's not a guarantee that the molecule will be successful. So some drugs, once they have been approved, they are banned from the application just in one year, two years, because of course, solubility, toxicity, and all of this. So why this? Because all of these things are discovered or they are studied during the progression process. So it is very easy to skip things. In. And when you go to approve, then you find, oh, this is a problem. So it's a bad end of pharmacy. Now, the advent of computer hardware and algorithm has been helping a lot now to study all this in advance. So let me use this uh, slide here, well. So normally now, in order to shorten the process, we will begin with uh, computational things by informatics, understanding all the drug properties, the pharmacokinetics, means how it is distributed into the body, how is it absorbed, what is the toxicity, before going to clinical trial. And then we can study all this, then we go to clinical trial now at least, we have prior information on the toxicity, on the behavior and everything. And this can quicken, shorten the time, and this speed up the process. So computational methods applied in drug design actually are of two categories. <laughs> are based on irrigant-based design, so that you have only the natural product, and you have a set of other known molecules to treat, for example, a cancer. So you have your data set, your database with this micro product, you don't know how they work. You train based on the molecule that you have known. So if the molecule is going to treat cancer, they have maybe three OH and they have three rings, then you train, okay, you need to have this properties to qualify to do this. So this is based on this machine learning approach. I will talk about it later. And the structure-based drug design, so it's not machine learning, but you need to have a target that you from a, a disease when you treat, we just look for a target. And it is a protein, mostly the protein. So look for a molecule that will go to bind to the protein and they stop that the biochemical process that is happening. Is that to test the microorganism? Then someone says, Oh, now I'm feeling well. The third one is the novel, you don't know the disease, you don't know the region. So you start from somewhere right. And I'll highlight the uh, on the edge. So the first one is uh, useful. So we can do quantitative structure activity, activity relationship, artificial neural network, decision tree, but all of these are based on machine learning algorithms. So how do we do? You have a database of natural product, and you have now camera informatics, these tools, they can predict all these things. So you can look into the uh, physical chemical property, membrane permeability, toxicity in vitro in vivo, and the human side. Then you can get your favorable natural product. Then you can say, okay, let us uh, establish uh, the protein ligand interaction. Huh? Then you can go to other technique that I'm going to explain, the molecular dynamics in presence, which now is based on a structure. So in molecular dynamics, so the system involved with time by solving the Newton equation of motion. That you have the force is equal to the product of mass and its acceleration. And then the force is the 
where the negative and negative will get the potential. And then we can have now the potential and get the first field. This characterize now you are assisting the bond angle, the angle, and all those how they are going to interact. And now the bad thing is that you cannot capture information related to the breakage of the bond, but non covering interaction now will capture the molecular dynamics. So, how do we capture those? Uh, other technique we can now combine quantum mechanics because the molecular dynamics is based on molecular mechanics. So now we can talk about quantum mechanics and molecular mechanics to understand the, the point of interest, for example, in the enzyme catalysis. So this is mostly powerful tool to understand the wave just the center of action. So the right system, for example, is treated in molecular mechanics and just the point of interest is treated with uh, quantum mechanics. So in the system now has uh, increases, so there is a constraint of time scale, accuracy, and the length. So as the system increases, actually, uh, the accuracy also to some extent increases. So getting information, for example, for protein folding uh, system like this one requires uh, a larger, larger time scale because the integration time scale we use in the molecular dynamics to Small, small step in the order of a second. And then the folding of this guy would take in the order of microseconds. So you need millions of integration time steps to go and get this information. So this is why molecular dynamics to some extent is very expensive. Sorry, Daniel. Yes. Can you go back to the video? Ah, okay. I think uh, for our students, it will be useful if you can explain. The the ah, okay. <laughs> so this is a, is a free energy grand scale. Try to show, okay, the, the confirmation of this, the folding state and then folding state. So what is the probable state or of this protein? So you see, this is a, a global minimum of the system, the local minimum. So before reaching to this state, it goes through differences. So at here, it is like this. Here it is this, and it goes here, crossing many other barriers before it reaches here. Yep. Thanks. Okay. Um, now, in my group, we are using more molecular dynamics. And how we do, we do a very rigorous molecular dynamics process. And uh, uh, we start with a, a structure for a protein. From our know, experimentalists, especially biochemists, are very good. So they go to an organism and they extract the protein they purify, they put into a database, and they say it helps us to do this. I'll give you an example. So we take the protein, we do molecular dynamics. So to get a sense of flexibility, because the molecules are constantly different. That's the way I speak here. The way I speak, the protein and bodies are just dancing. So we do molecular dynamics for the protein to keep on dancing. So we do clustering to have different structures of the protein. And then we can do some interaction with the database of natural products to any individual of this, and then we get the average. And this is uh, about molecular dynamics. Another thing we call the pharmacophore a uh, which screen. In pharmacophore, you have a database like this one here with known storage activity. So you train now your system that this to have activity, you need to have these futures. If you don't have this future, you don't qualify. And then you screen your database based on this pharmacophore, you know, futures. So okay, maybe you have this group, you need to have this group, you have this group. And then you can screen and then you can measure now we compute the pharmacokinetic, the pharmacodynamic. So the pharmacokinetic is how the drug does to the body and the pharmacodynamic is how the body does to the drug. So both you can check and see how oh, this will give the toxicity or not. And then we can compute the probability distribution. So the best performing molecule, we do molecular dynamics and we can rescore those the molecular dynamics results with the and the point free energy like MMPBTA and the interaction energy or by thermodynamic integration. 
And also we can uh, really do the intensity sampling approach, for example, by metadynamics simulation, and then to get the binding and unbinding kinetic of a system. Now, because now I'm working with experimental group. So with an experimental group, what do we do? They will extract the natural product. They test with the animal. They go to the test tube, and then they give us the compound. We go to the computer, and then we do the simulation, and then we compare the result. So this is what we are doing now. So one example, uh, the two molecules I showed before, this one, they have showed good cytor activity. Now the problem is we want to solve malaria in Africa. Malaria is a big problem. So a colleague in Italy uh, isolated this protein from this mosquito and said, okay, now you have the protein, go to your natural product. Let's see the wonders of this natural product and, the, and what is the experiment. So we did the docking experiment. So the difference between this one and this one actually is just the structure here. So the binding energy and the docking show this is less, uh, this is even more stronger. And the difference is brought here. So some of these experiments are not yet completed. So we said we have a little amount of this. So we are synthesizing again, and then we give the experimentalists to do, and another group now testing the behavior of assay of the mosquito, how is it behaving? So sometimes, but we used this process in the process of discovering heat shock of protein 9. Uh, heat shock protein 9 is a molecular papillone responsible for maintaining, regulating all the protein that are responsible for cancer. So the idea, if we're able to stop this, we can treat a range of protein uh, cancer at once. So we said, okay, let us screen many, many, many drugs from uh, natural product database, and let us test and see if this can be a good intervention. So we were lucky, so we screened this one, and we found that this one in computer by starting is more showing more affinity to the protein than the other molecule. Luckily, Dr. We have uh, Fabrizio Oledot, another experimental work, he said, oh, pitavastatin is still showing here a good inhibition with a very small effective concentration at the field. So we said, oh, okay. So our method is uh, at least able to be right with the experimental people like what they found. So natural product and your protective agent. So top here, we uh, used two examples of two natural products, Cucumin and uh, uh, his brother, Resvestastrol. So the problem with uh, Arzinia and uh, Parkinson's disease is that there is misfolding and the aggregation of this protein. And the role of the natural product is to prevent this misfolding of the amyloid fibers and also the aggregation. So by so doing, we can treat Arzinia disease. So we are using now this natural product. So how do we use it? We take this lotenene is a natural product known as an insecticide. So if it's an insecticide it induced to an animal, it induces a stress in a reactive oxygen species, which again disturbed the mitochondria, and then resulted to Parkinson's disease and Arzinia to the organism. So we can induce now the disease to the rat, to the drosophila, and then we extract the natural product. After we extract, we induce it again to the rat, and then we check the behavior. So the experimentalist, so once we induce this guy, then we check the histopathological in the brain, what is happening. And then, so this is before you see it's clean. And then after inducing this rotenene, which bring those uh, effect to the protein, that to the test of signaling, then the brain it is like this. And then when we induce now our natural product, so this is, for example, a garretin from green tea. So take a lot of green tea, very useful because we have this guy here. 
So yes, then we check a different concentration. Then when we induce it, we can see now this effect is going to really diminish. So now this experiment so is near to the end, but we have so many of this kind of what we are working on it and it's giving the good insight. Now something happened called the COVID. And we have to work to the community and to tell what is happening. So the structure of COVID is offering us three treatment options. Either we target to the immunity of the body, and we have many prominent uh, natural products. Who come in? Is it turmeric? And we use it every day. We not turmeric. We use it, or we prevent the virus from entering the human cell, or we act to the virus itself. Okay, so, so for me, the, the, the yellow. Yes, it's the yellow one. Oh, yes, that's one. Yes. Can you tell something about the spray? Ah, yes, I will address this slide, especially for cucumin. Okay. I will explain it in detail. So, when uh, the, the, this outbreak uh, happened, so we said now we uh, a friend at the University of Delta Mines acquired this natural product. And uh, he tested them against many other viruses before, uh, including the ambient flu. And so we say, let us create now a database of natural products, all of them, but with antiviral property only, regardless of the class. So we created the database. And because biochemists were by then had isolated the proteins from the virus, and then we screened it against the viral proteins that were available by then, seven targets. And then we ended up getting four promising new models, natural products. So we said these are not approved drugs. It's very expensive going again to the forest, and we need immediate response. So in the computational approach, one of the things we use is similarity stage and then purposing. So you choose for a similar molecule. So you go to the approved drug, you look for a very similar molecule, and then you test it for the variability. So once we looked for the similarity effect, we got many drug from drug bank. And then we did the screening and we got these three molecules. We did again the molecular dynamics in all of those computations. Then we ended up with these three approved drugs. So we said, and of course it's great in both the great or selected. So we said, okay, now what are the sources of this? So they're all natural products. So if we wanted to give immediate solution to the community, what are the sources of this? Where can we find it? So then we say, okay, let's go to the sources. That's wonderful. Ah, okay. So uh, we we use the tomino tomino to coefficient. So like uh, how using this uh, uh, the, the 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 molecule. So we set the criteria. So there is a formula because I'm not writing here that we use. It. That we say, okay, search for molecules that are similar, let's say 90% to this one with this criteria. So, one of the cases we use the Taminoto uh, criteria. So, yes, yes, based on the chemical on, on this. Okay. And then it will screen everything similar to, to this one. This yes. Depending on it. Yes, yes. So you have a way to quantify the distance between the structures. Of the yes, molecules. yes. And you look at molecules that have small distance. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How do you call it? Ta Tanimoto. Tanimoto? Yes. Okay. Tanimoto index. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we said, okay, what are the natural sources of this? So we found, wow, one of the very good natural sources is the citrus. But unfortunately, we discovered the fruit of the waste. So it's found at the pier and not was not for the whole. This is the white guy, the white thing. That is a good source of hesperdine. So back home now, we said, what should we do? So when we were traveling, then we found this paper from Italian people. 
So they found now acknowledging now the computational studies suggest that it has carried in a flavonoid abundant in Cyprus binding to the protein receptor. Of course, with many other people they found it. And then they're extracting now this one for uh, and uh, producing many, many, many milligram dosage per day and to give. The good thing now, this guy has chance to is in a clinical trial for COVID day, uh, treatment. For us, we say, okay, take the formulation, the combination of this, blend that together, drink. You will find the molecular within there, it will serve the purpose. And it's going to have two purposes. So if you contracted the virus, they will some molecule stop replication, other will prevent it from getting inside, from entering. But there is one disadvantage that we need to take precautionary. Our body is very sensitive, it is very good chemistry feature. It is sensitive, even very small change in the molecule. Take example. Okay, this one, this and this, by just looking, you say they are same. Of course, they are same. The structure is the same, the molecule is the same, but the chemistry is not the same. This is pointing the other way. This is pointing the other way. So it's like, of course, they are like mirror image, right? They are mirror image, but they are not superimposable. So you cannot take this and then post to it. The body is a good chemistry feature, chemistry feature, and it says, this is Mary's in Eremone, this is Mary's in Nolan. So there are two different things. So the good example is this one, Calidomite. If we just say let's do the similarity test, you will get something similar to this, similar to this 100%. But actually, this is the active, this is the very not in danger. And you can Google the effect of this one as exactly to best research because it was established to pregnant mother and the result is to give better of. of Child with many body defects. Because when it was administered, it was converted to this guy. And people were not able to, what is happening? Then you find out, oh, you take this, it's converted, so it's like this, and the body goes like this. And then this, looking this way, is a problem, and the body does not take off. So, last one about the uh, protein ligand interaction is you don't know the starting point, you go blind. So how do you go blind? I take one example. We have been working in cassava. Uh, cassava tastes bitter sometimes, cassava base tastes sweet. What causes is this guy cyanide. So in cassava, we, there is uh, this molecule called dirinamarin, and there is the enzymes called dirinamarat that do the hydrolysis to remove the cyanide that tastes bitter. So we wanted to see the stability and the interaction between the rinamarine and the rinamarat. So, but we don't have the starting. So we started doing homology modeling. So this is the powerful computation on our interactive design. You don't have thing, you can start with the thing from another organism. So we did the model from a light template, and then we obtained our protein for the cassava. Then we did the stability by molecular dynamics, and then we established the interaction by other method and they say okay well, this is the structure so we are still working on this with the, with the other interaction things but the graph design is not only docking is not only protein ligand time there's a many interesting things for example drug dissolution membrane permeability aggregation nucleation polymorphism crystal structure these are very interesting things in this talk I will share with you with one thing. Self assembly and aggregation processes of a drug. And then I will finish it with non technology. So let's take an example. I have for three natural products. So I'll choose one to explain. So we have capsaicin from pepper. You know, pepper does give a, a strong sensation. Yeah, is this guy here. When you have pepper and file create test. The bunny sensation is this guy which uh, give uh, uh, the bunny sensation, but it's very good in uh, rheumatism arthritis. The challenge is to absorb in water. So we, we try now to understand that at least to get some insight at atomic level, what is the conformation of different surface? How does it behave? 
So now we are starting uh, the group we have uh, started in Tanzania. So at least we started working on this with uh, this student. And uh, it's a good thing that we calculated also the solvation of free energy. And uh, okay, let me talk about this guy. You asked about cooking. Same problem with capsizing. But now this guy has many, many, I think, many applications than even capsizing. Now our interest is, of course, it can exist in this conformation or also in this, but this is in a higher percentage than this. Now, because it is poorly solved with water, and experimentalists have mentioned that, okay, it is in a crystalline form and also in an amorphous form. So we are looking now. What is the behavior of water near a crystalline and how this crystalline changes the property of water at this interface? And then which surface is more stable than the other? So here, less stable, this is more stable, and this is a merely and probably later with the Edgar will be looking maybe at the mini passage of water. So that's the most interesting thing. So you wanted to ask something about cooking. Now you can ask here. Or we go on. I was asking more about the experiment because ah. you see that you can do very fast with making the cooking. Uh -huh. How can you connect this to any experiment than cooking? To any lab experiment or yeah. computational? Lab experiment. Lab experiment. Yeah. Ah, so there are many ways we can connect. First, uh, for the bioassay, and second, just the investigating uh, uh, the cooking itself, uh, looking, for example, on the conformational stability, aggregation uh, processes. We can, people think uh, experimentalists can do. I don't know how they do, they can do, but I think they can do. And try the establishing which is more stable than they are. So, so I just want to know the experimentalists have done this experiment. Uh -huh. So I know I know experimentalists have done it, understanding the crystal structure of this and the changes whether it's in crystalline or it's amorphous. Uh, amorphous. So this is what I know because we started working and we obtained the crystal structure from them from the experimental people. Yes, yes. Now, last but one. Drug assembly, so let's uh, take this necrosamide, how we explain it away. This chemistry is very interesting. So look, this uh, change at this uh, on orientation of this, this, uh, this uh, hydro angle result into different things. So when it is changing, like when it is like this, this is a beta form. And then once it flip up here, it gives the alpha form. And the experimentalists have given two answers. Other experimental groups say this is most stable and this is least stable. Other experimental groups say we, we don't see the difference. And the other say that mostly this is going to be stable. So we want to say, okay, what is the real reality of what is happening? So we, we, we did the molecular dynamic simulation in water. Because it's for a service, so we want to, first to understand the behavior of this in water. So we have, uh, okay, let me go here. So we have different systems. So we have four or six and 150 uh, monomers of microsomite in water. So we said, let's look at how they aggregate and why they are for a servo. So interesting, they aggregate forming a chair that right? you sit in the office and forming something like this. But what drives that stability is the parallel interaction stabilized by pi cation interaction. And then we say, the, what should be done? So we measure the solvation for each interaction system and the, and the interaction energy for aggregation and for the solubility to the solvation. So we found this then uh, vice versa. When the solvation energy is too high, Small than the aggregation energy is very, very strong. Like for this one, the interaction energy is very stable. And then the solvation was very, very low. And the goals and do that way. So we said, okay, this poor solubility is because of this interaction. This is the dominant state in the 
quality. What should we do to improve the solubility? A, the co-crystallization. Chemists normally they're interested in functionalization, but that has the risk of reducing the toxicity, uh, increases toxicity or changing molecules. Open question for all of us, if anyone interested, is this natural product. We don't know how it works, but it has gained much interest around the world because of its property. Uh, wow, let me down. Let <laughs> me <I> finish. <laughs> so with a, with, a, with a group in a Miami University, uh, with this man, so we have established now work trying to look into the solubility and the free energy and the, the solvation mechanism of different solvents. Hope we come up with uh, something. And the last three, I talk about uh, addressing the solubility problem of natural product by nanotechnology. And uh, my battery will die now soon. I use this example here below. That uh, when molecule, when need to give strong biological activity, needed to cross the membrane and then to have to be absorbed. And uh, this, uh, some molecule like lecithin, the, uh, the left membrane by layers. And they can act as good drug carrier. So we investigated the ability. So this is lecithin and this is nicrosamide that I'm talking about. And it goes on the free thing, like it's at the end of the interested in looking at it. So we say to capture now more detailed information, we say, okay, let's start with a very small system and let's see how it self-assembles and how does it load the molecule and how does it load it and the derivative. So before it started loading this molecule, it self-assembled this one into a bilayer, right? And then it then start attracting the system. Like here, now it has assembled the, like the head tail and the hydrophobic area here. And this necrosamide, the hydrophobic layer of it, then is looking, interacting with the hydrophobic side of it. And then the hydrophobic is in line with the tail. And then it's okay, this is it. It is then a do a form like a mystery uh, for a very longer, very longer run. So, Craig, uh, this will be a funny question. How do we communicate science to the community and not the community? And uh, finally, I acknowledge a lot of people have been uh, working together, supporting together um, by group in Tanzania. And many, many people here in uh, ICTP is the engine, of course, for me to, to do this science there. Yeah. Thanks to Ari and to everyone. To uh, Alexandro, Ryan, and Tisa, and many, many people that have been working with them. Grazie mille, Sasante Sana. This is the end of my talk. Interested, I could not come in, in contact with them many. Okay, okay. So this is the, the problem. It was more the contact than the, the, the fact that they, they are. Yes. 
Okay, okay. Trying make effort to contact them, but we have not succeeded. Okay, okay. Maybe, but what we do just with our lab, we cooperate on these uh, uh, things. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Of course, that is the thing we, maybe we are asking here. <laughs> How should we go from the science to the non scientific community? Yeah. Ah, so I, I cannot, maybe I should not share. Yes. Uh, what is happening? Yeah. I think uh, the clicker. Click here. I don't know how you click. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I don't know actually what is happening. <laughs> Maybe I should do this. Okay, yes. Okay. Now it should work. Yes. yes. And now uh, I don't know if there's a question in the I don't see any questions. So we'll start yeah, there was a raise hand. Ah, okay. So let's see. Any question from online? Question? There was a raise hand, so I don't know. Ah, okay, any other question? Maybe from the oh, uh, Daniel. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> thank you for the talk. Actually, uh, it's quite interesting. You could present so many results from different angles, you know, to put all this together within the short time you present your talk. Presenting your talk is quite impressive. Now, uh, you, you are in one side showing structure based drug design methods. Yeah. including molecular dynamics and all of that docking and all of that then on the other side you're showing ligand based approaches like like tanimoto similarity like pharmacophore yeah. methods and so on yeah. and you are trying to fuse all of that together yeah. and I, I think that there's one thing we should not forget that similarity methods themselves are not sufficient because two similar molecules uh, with very high tanimoto similarity may have completely two different modes of action so exactly. uh, activity and mode of action so two molecules may have the same activity but different modes of action so i would have been really impressed if you could take one case scenario and show clearly how you use molecular dynamics use molecular docking for macro four and similarity search methods and how your results are converging together sure we are because when there are many uh there are many many examples at the end of the day i was a bit confused so more or less if there was you could take one case like one case study one or two case studies and show how these approaches come together and how to be coherent actually actually it would make a lot of sense because there are a lot of results you have in there and uh and uh we we we, we have seen all the various methods how you use them but you use them in different case scenarios so at the end of the day uh, I, I was a bit caught up by, by, by this. Yeah, thanks a lot. Actually, uh, thanks a very wonderful comment. And uh, of course, I tried to highlight when I was uh, talking about Taridomide and uh, the Raymonene. It's not always the case. Th thanks a lot, Fidel. Uh, yes, uh, it's a wonderful comment. Thanks for all the questions. I think we have to close because the battery of Daniel is ending. She, she's bringing me here. Uh, ah, she's ringing the button. Yes, yes, she's uh, ringing. <laughs> okay, then there's the time for another question. Ah, okay. Yes, please. Similarity search. You said that there's different criteria. Do you have to tailor the criteria for the specific problem that you're working on, or is there like some set of criteria that they find works the best for all all problems and all? So yes, you need to tell the criteria. That, for example, now this is my model. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, it is shown some promising activity. But I want to find maybe more effective. So I want to say, so chemistry believes that the similar molecule working with a similar mechanism. Although sometimes the precaution always should be there. So I tell now, okay, I set a criteria that this molecule and this future, search for molecule with similar future to this one, 
This is similar, maybe 100 percent to 90 percent similar. And then I will get to the smaller, and then I need it to cut out them or get it back. That's what it works. So how much how much do you have to change the criteria though? Is it always the same criteria? Uh, so we have different methods. So uh, each method has different criteria. I see. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Other questions in the audience? The youngest audience? Yes. Yeah, I, I think the approach is really interesting because, uh, like, in Guatemala, we also have like lots of different plants that have like medical properties that are like known by local. So I really like the approach. And like, um, on on one part, you mentioned that the, the one of the processes is identifying the, the the parts of the molecules through like extraction and that. Like, do you actually have like nuclear magnetic resonance in in, in, in Tanzania, or, or or do you have the test? In uh, and in Tanzania, we, we, we don't have uh, the nuclear magnetic resonance, but we worked with a, a group in Sweden uh, at Uppsala University. It's where we normally send our samples for uh, characterization. So normally we will go to Uppsala University or in uh, Botswana, in Tanzania, also South Africa. So in Tanzania, we don't have any mark. We had one one that is proof of any mark, but I, I'm not sure if it is working correctly now. So, but for a complete any mark, we normally have we collaborate in uh, Australia in Sweden. Yes. Uh, so, it, it, so in, in your model, uh, you use mainly similarity with other pharmaceuticals. That you know that they are active, and this disease for them. Yes, yes. But so, have you thought, or, or is have you thought in considering the the, like the like the wisdom of the community? For example, if you know that they use some uh, some uh, uh, plant for treating a uh, uh, cancer headache or something, maybe you have you thought in including this uh, knowledge into your model in order to like maybe study the compounds that are in this plant to, to do these yeah. kind of things. Actually, uh, actually that is uh, the, the very foundation okay. because the natural product uh, it started from plants. So normally we would go to the community. So they would say, okay, we, we use this plant to treat this disease. So we will take, if they say it is a leaf, so we take the, the part of the leaves. Now we go to the lab, we do all this process until we get the individual molecules. And then we go and test the individual molecules. And then we, okay, this is how we stay working. So the whole database is based on the things that you know. From the community. Yeah. Ah, okay, good. So the good example I did not tell you is about the, the process that Enlightenment of the prosthetic gland is the problem now in uh, Tanzania and everywhere. So my parents uh, had that the same problem. I don't know if you remember sometimes that. So, but now they that they say, okay, we go to the to the we take this uh, seed of this fruit, we grind it, and then we, we drink. It, then we, we get here. So we're interested. Okay, let's take it and let's take it to the lab. So we are still doing that experiment to us. Uh, uh, that way, what is exactly the ingredient that works there? Some of them, of course, they work synergistically. So we try also to combine a fractionation, different fractionate in two, in one, and then we look at the outcome. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, uh, one last question. But yeah. ultimately, you get one molecule, but this plant has many molecules. So how do you reach to this one exactly? Aha, uh -huh. how do you reach to this one? Yeah. So actually, yes. So when we take this one, for example, the leaves, okay? So we do what we call a pulverization. You, either you grind everything, but you do uh, shed drying, and they dry, you grind, you soak into the solvent. So the rule of solvent too, so we have different uh, solvent polarity, non-polar and polar solvent. And then you, we evaporate the solvent. We remain with the crude extra. So we can just use the crude extra to test what is happening. Because this the crude extract actually what is they use uh, in the local community. And then we want to separate an individual with it. So we test 
So we take the same composition. So we go to different solvent. And so we fractionate with the, the polarity. So the atom molecule will come fast. The molecule will come very slowly. So we take this coming fast. And we use, let's say, UVB to check what is the possible. And then we can go now from here to, to purify. And then we use this uh, gigantic uh, spectroscopic tools that they will give uh, the signals. But for uh, essential oil is, of course, we don't need to go up to here. So we take the, we extract the oil, and you go to this gas chromatograph because there is a, there is a evaporator, and they have a lot of database of this molecule. So once it, it ionizes it, it gives the signal and it captures the names. And it gives this is the name of this molecule. This is the name corresponding. So you have directly the names there. But in the end, you isolate more than one molecule. Yes. But you're it, choosing one of them. Yes, either all of them or one. Okay. So at the end, if there are 10 molecules here, for example, uh, this is an example here. For example, this molecule, there are, there are more than two here. But, and of course, they are similar. This is just the change the conformation here. And was a very problem in isolation. So we, but we are selected all of them, but at different stages. So you take one, you put the other, but until you say you are under, now I completed it, there is no anything coming out. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Daniel, for the Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Just uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. You, you say again bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. Yeah. Ah, so bye. Thanks for, for the colleagues online, and this is the end of the talk. Goodbye. <laughs>